is Sarah Sharp Fellows. My husband was Rear Admiral, upper half. That means two stars. Frederick Gale Fellows, Jr., United States Navy. From there, he, he kind of milled around a bit. He went as, he worked with um, Bob Gormley, who was, uh, he was a, an inspector general or something like that for Continent Airland. Ted worked with him for several months while the Bureau tried to find a spot for Ted to go. Um, as it turned out, let's see, who was CO, CNO by that time? It was uh, Jim Holloway, Admiral Holloway was CNO by that time, and he had known Ted for ever, ever since Ted was with Admiral Goldthwaite, all those years ago when, he was, when Ted was a lieutenant. And uh, Admiral Holloway was the aide and flag, no, executive assistant to uh, an admiral that everybody called the Beard, Admiral Perry. <laughs> Perry, Perry he was. Um, so anyway, Admiral Holloway is now Chief of Naval Operations. Ted is kind of muddling around, not doing what he wanted to do, which was get an aircraft carrier. But um, he got orders to the West Coast, so back we go across country again, leaving the girls, uh, leaving our older daughter in college at Virginia Tech. Uh, youngest daughter, we snatched her out of her she was going into her senior year in high school, and that was very difficult, but most Davy families have episodes like that, and the kids seem to get through it reasonably well. Anyway, um, back to the USS Hancock in San Diego, California. Actually, the Hancock was home ported in Alameda, California, but with the air wing split like it was, in part of it in Lamore and part of it in San Diego, uh, most of the work of getting the very old World War II USS Hancock ready for a tour in Vietnam took place in San Diego. Everybody was gone a lot again. Uh, they deployed heading for Hawaii you know, to pick up their briefings and get all their last minute stuff done in Pearl Harbor and all of a sudden there were secret orders from Admiral Holloway and they were not to be opened until the ship had sailed out past the Golden Gate Bridge. So. That got everybody kind of up, you know, <laughs> and jittery. But uh, what happened was they were going to do the evacuations, and the, and the news had not broken yet, and that's why the orders were secret, of course. Um, so Ted opened the orders, and it said, proceed uh, with all possible haste to Pearl Harbor, and that's where they found out the rest of you know, what was going to happen. Anyway, uh, they, they did. They wound up picking up, no, they wound up taking the air wing over to um, Cuby Point in the Philippines. They offloaded the air wing, brought on board the Marines and the big helicopters. Well, they had several, a couple of sizes of helicopters. Uh, off they went to Phnom Penh to evacuate Cambodia. They got that done. They, were, they thought they were going to have a, a few days in uh, Singapore for leave. Uh, not so. It was, they had, um, I believe they had already gone to Q 
QB to offload the Marines and bring on the air wing again and get to Singapore. Singapore. When word came, hurry to evacuate South Vietnam and uh, Saigon, and I th you pretty you pretty much know the story there. But Ted had the the Marines on board. They were evacuating from the embassy. And by the way, that picture, that picture that is so well. Um, well, engraved in everybody's memory, is not the top of the U.S. Embassy. It's the top of a CIA safe house. And I didn't, I've known that it wasn't the top of the Embassy for years, but it wasn't until we moved here that I learned it was a CIA safe house. <laughs> it, was, it was by sheer luck that, that those uh, safe houses um, had been readied and, 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 and declared strong enough to have helicopters land and pick up uh, evacuees. So anyway, at the, at the embassy, uh, they had trouble. They had, the ambassador wouldn't let them chop down the trees, the big tree, the big banyan tree. Um, but they had to because they had to have the room for the helicopters. So they finally got the tree chopped down when they started evacuating people. And it was day and night. It was a round-the-clock operation. Um, somebody in Washington declared the evacuation over. And no, no more evacuees coming out. No more planes going in. But we had left, I think, eight young Marines on top of the U.S. Embassy. And Ted sent one of the helicopters back to get those young men out of there. The, the morning, you know, no more evacuations. Well, he's, his father was a Marine in World War I, so he wasn't going to leave us Marines on, on top of the Embassy. Uh, He had the entire flight deck, not, not the flight deck, the hangar deck, clear. All the planes were on the flight deck. All the Vietnamese evacuees were filling up. They literally filled up. The, the, the pictures are amazing. Filled up that hangar deck. They took them to, let's see, I can't think of the name of the president of the Philippines at the time, but he didn't want all those Vietnamese in the country. And, but that was where they were taking them. So they finally got some sort of an agreement and they were able to use that big island in the middle of Subic Bay. And that's where the uh, evacuees were offloaded. Uh, they finished that tour and sailed back to San Diego, uh, offloaded the fighter pilot, uh, the fighter planes there, um, came up to Alameda, and the Hancock was decommissioned the following, unless it couldn't have been more than about two months later. And she was sold for scrap. 